It's not mine. Yeah, this looks like a microphone. Well, we got Larry there now. Hey, everybody. Oh, I don't have a. I don't have mute. Raz, if you put your. I can mute you. I've muted you. <laughs> the problem is, if I mute you all, I can't tell if you want to say something. <laughs> Wave at me, I suppose. No, no. I'm sorry. How do I get everybody on the screen again? I'm I'm looking at the uh, three. I've got one arrow, two arrows, three arrow, two arrows. I clicked on my photo over to the right. Yeah. All right. Well. Oh, there we go. I clicked on a little plus sign and it made it four people. There we go. One's dog. Okay, it wasn't mine. <laughs> Did you mute yourself? Are you ready? That must be a pretty lonely chamber right now. Ready to begin? Is everyone ready? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, welcome. I call this meeting to order. It's the regular city council meeting of March 23rd, 2020. The time is a little after 7.30 p.m. Uh, on March 18th, Governor Whitmer signed Executive Order 2020-15 to order a temporary change to the Open Meetings Act to allow public bodies to conduct their meetings electronically while also facilitating public participation until April 15th, 2020. This measure is being taken to mitigate the spread of coronavirus, recognizing that public bodies still have an obligation to conduct business during this crisis. The public can participate by following the instructions in our agenda packet or telephoning in to 929-205-6099 and using meeting code number 7070-97445 the plain side. The public to address city council during meeting open to the public, where it's usually reserved in our agenda. And we ask that you please acknowledge yourself and identify your name and address as normal before you speak and wait to be acknowledged. And all votes by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please take the role of city council? Councilman Bliss. I'm here. Councilwoman Clark. Come back. Yeah. Might be muted. Might be, she was here. She, I saw her. Councilman Corbett. Yes, here. Thank you. Mayor Potem Grafstein. I'm here. Councilor Rohrbach. Here. Councilman Soltis. Here. Mayor, Sol Mayor Hartwell. Yes, I'm here. Is uh, Councilwoman Clark here? She was. All right, we'll acknowledge her when she comes back. Or if it's an audio problem, we'll figure it out. All right, approval of the agenda. Uh, there was one recommendation to move uh, an We'd be moving report D3 later in the agenda under ordinances. What number? G2. So if council, some of the council would uh, make a motion to move D3 to the G2 position in our agenda. Your Honor, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Corbett. Is there support? Your Honor. Ms. Grafstein, thank you. It's been Second. moved. And um, any discussion? All right, it's been moved to move item D3 to G2 in the agenda. We're we have to do a roll call vote on this. Uh, Clerk, will you take the roll the vote on this? Councilman Clark. Councilman Corbett. Yes. Mayor Potem Grafstein. Yes. Councilor Rohrbach. Yes. 
Councilman Soltis. Yes. Councilman Bliss. Yes. Mayor Hartwell. I vote uh, yes, the motion carries. Any other, any other additions or deletions to the agenda tonight? Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Bliss. Uh, I move that we add the resolution urging the federal government to assist local governments in the city of Madison Heights in their fight against COVID-19 to the agenda. Uh, I believe that would be under reports D4. Your Honor. We can do D3 now that D3 has been vacated. Okay, so then D3. <laughs> And Mr. Corbett? Yes, my. It's been moved and seconded to add to the agenda the resolution urging the federal government to assist local governments in the fight against COVID 19. Um, it would be placed in the agenda at uh, the location of D3. Is there any discussion to add this item? Okay, will the clerk please take the vote to add this item? Councilman Corbett? Let's say it again. Councilman Corbett? Yeah. Mayor Pertem Grastein? Yes. Councilman Rohrbach? Yes. Councilman Soltis? Yes. Councilman Bliss? Yes. Councilman Clark? I can't hear anybody, you guys. There's no sound. May I may I suggest your mayor or whatever it may be sent for a text. My recommendation be go out and come back in that's what saved me. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of an echo, but no no audio issues outside of the echo. And I think that's coming from council chamber with a speaker system. It is. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, I vote yes. Pardon me? I vote yes. Okay. Motion carried. Yes, it is. All right. The meeting is open to the public. As normal, if anyone would like to address the council on any subject, now is the opportunity. Um, if you could please Signal us and we will unmute you and recognize you. And if you'd be so kind to give us your name, address, and affiliation. Um, the meeting is open to the public. Okay, I don't have any indication that anyone um, wants to speak during meeting in the public. If we get communications later, uh, we'll review them. All right, we can continue on. The agenda. Um, we don't have any communications tonight. However, we do have reports. There are three reports tonight. The first report is from the city manager. It's the extension of the local state of emergency declared on March 16th, 2020, regarding the coronavirus. Mrs. Marsh, do you have a report? Yes, on March the 10th, the first case of COVID-19 was confirmed in Oakland County. Based on public health threat due to the ability and work for COVID-19 to spread quickly, uh, Madison Hutz approved a, declared a local state of emergency on uh, Monday, March the 12th or March the 16th. That expires in seven days, which is today. So council needs to approve to extend this through May the 26th in order to keep the city under a state of emergency. This is needed for federal funding and FEMA reimbursement for our COVID-19 expenditures. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Marsh. What's the wish of city council? Mr. Mayor, uh, I move that as recommended by staff, the uh, council extend the uh, current uh, state of emergency through, and I'm sorry, what was the day, May? 26th. May 26th. <clears throat>
Thank you. Is there support? Support. Who is that? Uh, Rohrbach. Oh, okay. All right, it's been uh, moved and seconded. Um, is there any discussion on this item from City Council? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Sherman? We were suggesting um, in the form of the motion that uh, we, we picked, we went out at least 60 days and tied it to a council meeting date. That's why we picked Tuesday, May 26, 2020. That's the Tuesday after mm -hmm. Memorial Day. But we also indicated, or until the local emergency is abated, whichever occurs first, subject to council declaring uh, renewal or extension, uh, so it would come back to council table for further action. So the issue is whether uh, the maker of the motion and support would agree to that change. I have no problem with that, Your Honor. Mrs. Rohrbach, are you okay with that clarification as the maker of the motion? Okay. Perhaps she'd unmute. I read your lips. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, you ready? All right, I, let me restate the motion just so it's okay. clear. It was moved and seconded to extend the declaration of the local state of emergency until Tuesday. May 26, 2020, or until the local emergency is abated, whichever occurs first, subject to the declaration being renewed or extended with city council's approval. Um, Clerk, Clerk, will you please take uh, the vote? Yes. Um, Mayor Pratem Grasty. Yes. Councilor Roback. Yes. Councilman Soltis. Yes. Councilman Bliss. Yes. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Corbett. Yes. Mayor Hartwell. I vote yes. The motion carries. Uh, the next report tonight is from the DPS director. It's a 2020 local cost participation agreement with MDOT, the National Highway Performance Program, uh, the 13 mile sectional concrete repairs from John R. to Hales. Mrs. Marsh, do you have a report? Yes. The city has been awarded a National Highway Performance Program grant for 2020. The only road in Madison Heights that's eligible for funding is 13 Mile. The funding is for sectional concrete repairs to a portion of 13 Mile John R. from Hales. The amount of funding is determined by the federal aid formula and will be dis dispersed on an 81.85 federal and 18.15% local match basis. The attached cost participation agreement specifies this cost allotment based upon the original estimates. MDOT handled all bidding and contract awards. Bids will be open on April the 3rd. The grand total construction cost is $700,100. $573,000 of this will be federal funds and $127,000 of this would be city funds. Funds are budgeted and available. As this is a federal aid project, we are not certain of project timing due to NHPP funding availability. Staff and I recommend that City Council approve this cost participation agreement, contract number 20-5061, and authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign on behalf of the city. Thank you, Mrs. Marsh. What's the wish of City Council? Your Honor. Your Honor. Oh, you're on mute. Yeah, I'm sorry, who made the motion? Uh, Your, Your Honor, I, I move that we approve the cost, partici cost participation agreement contract 20-5061 and authorize the mayor and the clerk to sign on behalf of the city. Thank you, is there support? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, support. Uh, thank you, Mr. Corbett. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve the cost participation agreement and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign on behalf of the city. Uh, is there any discussion? All right. All right, will the clerk please take the vote? Councilor Rohrbach. Yes. Councilman Soltis. Yes. Councilman Bliss. Yes. Councilman Clark. Yes. yes. Councilman Corbett. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grastine. Yes. Mayor Hartwell. I vote yes. Uh, the motion carries. The next report was added to our agenda. It's uh, going to be referred to as item uh, D3. 
It's the proposed resolution urging the federal government to assist local governments uh, in their fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Mrs. Marsh, do you have any comments? Yes, I can read the resolution. Um, whereas the World Health Organization has declared a 2019 novel coro coronavirus COVID-19 a global public health emergency, as of March 23rd, 2020, 332,935 cases have been reported worldwide, and the number of deaths associated with COVID-19 has surpassed 14,510 and now has been declared a worldwide pandemic. And whereas to date, Oakland County has 277 diagnosed cases of COVID-19, the second highest number in the state of Michigan. And whereas on Monday, March 23rd, Governor Whitmer instituted an executive order 2020-21, which states that to suppress the spread of COVID-19, to prevent the state's healthcare system from being overwhelmed, to allow time for the protection of critical test kits, ventilators, and personal protective equipment, and to avoid needless deaths, it is reasonable and necessary to direct residents to remain at home or in their place of residence to the maximum extent feasible. This order takes effect tonight at 12.01 and cuts continues through April the 13th, 2020 at 11.59 p.m. And whereas during the past week, there have been 80,000 people filing unemployment claims due to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic and the devastating economic impact will be felt by local governments and our residents and communities such as Madison Heights for months to come. And whereas state and local governments are on the forefront of the response to outbreaks like COVID-19 and other public health emergencies, our employees range from healthcare professionals and public safety employees to public sector workers charged with maintaining clean water and sanitation. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Madison Heights urges the federal government to prioritize our nation's ability to prepare for and respond to global public health crises. Failure to prioritize this pandemic crisis is leaving already under-resourced state, county, and local governments and departments without a meaningful and appropriate epidemic response infrastructure in the federal government to protect people in our communities and our nation and to reduce the risk around the globe. And the City Council of the City of Madison Heights urges the federal government to maximize coordination with state and local agencies as well as private partners to not only slow the spread of the disease but to work towards fully equipping our first responders to deal with this pandemic in a safe manner. And the City Council of the City of Madison Heights calls upon the federal government to assist local and state governments in dealing with and addressing the public health, safety, and welfare of our residents by financially assisting local and state governments with our costs related to dealing with this pandemic and keeping our citizens safe. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be sent to U.S. Congressman Andy Levin and Senator Stabenow, Stabenow and Peters and President Donald Trump. Thank you. Uh, what's the wish of City Council? Your Honor, uh, I move that we adopt the resolution. Thank you, sir. Uh, is there support? Your Honor. Mrs. Grestein. Support. Thank you. Uh, it's been moved and seconded uh, to adopt uh, the resolution entitled um, Resolution Urging Federal Government to Assist Local Governments in the City of Madison Heights in their fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Is there a discussion from City Council? Um, I have a comment, if you don't mind. Um, I think this is an important resolution. Um, and I think we also have an important role in speaking up for the Asian Americans that live and work in our city. Um, I'm getting reports on a daily basis of racism against many of our residents. Um, so I think we need to use our platform to condemn any racism, because of course, disease does not choose a person based on race or national origin. Um, and I think coming from, from this legislative body, just to um, remind the public that any racism towards any individual related to coronavirus or any reason is uncalled for and not welcome in Madison Heights, um, especially during these times. Um, and I think we need to learn uh, to uh, urge law enforcement um, all the way up to the Attorney General um, to just be on the lookout uh, for hate crime. Um, 
I don't know if it can be part of this resolution, but at some point, um, I know this council will be ready to speak. Any other discussion? Okay, let's uh, clerk, please take the vote. Yes. Councilman Soltis. Yes. Councilman Bliss. I vote yes. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Corbett. Yes. Mayor Pertem Grafstein. Yes. Councilor Rohrbach. Yes. Mayor Hartwell. I vote yes. Motion carries. Um, so the next item on our agenda will be agenda item F1. It's a bit of word of purchase and it's regarding uh, the police department bullet resistant vests. Uh, Mrs. Mars, do you have a report? Yes, earlier this budget year, the police department took its first major step towards professional accreditation through the Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police. Part of this process requires our city to have a mandatory bullet resistant vest wear policy for all of our full-time police officers and our reserve police officers. Because we are mandating the wearing of bullet resistant vests, the city is also responsible for, for providing these vests to all of our officers and reserve officers, as opposed to voluntary use of bullet resistant vests, which has been our process to date. The Department of Justice has a partial reimbursement program for the purchase of bullet resistant vests, but they also require that there's a mandatory wear policy in place. This bid notice was emailed to 101 vendors of who 18 downloaded the specifications. We received four bids on February the 27th, one of which was administratively rejected for not providing the proper paperwork and references. After reviewing and rema the remaining three bids, the lowest responsible bidder was On Duty Gear LLC with a unit item cost of $795 per vest. This would bring the total cost to $51,675 for 65 vests to cover all active police officers and police reserve officers. This number could change slightly if we determine more vests are needed. Funds are available in the federal drug forfeiture account for this purchase. Staff and I respectfully request that City Council approve the initial purchase of 65 bullet resistant vests for current police officers and reserve officers through the federal drug forfeiture at a unit price of $795 each from the lowest responsible bidder on duty gear for a total initial purchase amount of $51,675 and to authorize the purchase of additional vests at the same unit cost this fiscal year for new police officer hires and new reserve officers. If approved, we will submit this bill for the vest to the DOJ with an expectation of receiving $25,837.50 in reimbursement. Okay, thank you. Uh, what's the wish of City Council? Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. I uh, move that the uh, Council approve the uh, recommended purchase of 65 bullet resistant vests for current police officers and reserve officers through the federal drug forfeiture fund, a unit price of 795 each from the lowest responsible bidder on duty gear for a total initial purchase of $51,675 and authorize the purchase of additional vests at the same unit cost uh, this fiscal year for new police hires and new reserve officers. Thank you. That's well stated. Is there a support? Your Honor. Is there support. A oh, was it Grafstein? Grafstein. Thank you, Grafstein. Okay, it's been moved and seconded uh, to accept the recommendation uh, with the additional authorization. Um, is there any discussion on this item? Okay, let's vote. Uh, will the clerk please take the vote? Yes. Councilman Bliss. I vote yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Corbett? Yes, ma'am. Mayor Pro Tem Grafstein? Yes. Councilor Rohrbach? Yes. Councilman Soltis? I vote yes. Mayor Hartwell? I vote yes. The motion carries. Uh, the next bit of word uh, or purchase tonight from the DPS director is regarding the 2020 water main replacement pipes and part. Uh, Mrs. Marsh, do you have a report? Yes, in order to prepare for the upcoming 2020 Proposal R3 water main replacement projects, DPS staff and the purchasing staff prepared and posted an invitation to bid 
for water main replacement pipe and parts on the online cooperative bidding system on March the 4th. The bid was distributed to 651 bidder, bidders, out of which 39 downloaded the bid documents. On March the 13th, the city received four sealed bids for the above reference project by the deadline. The bids were tabulated and the completion of the bid ana analysis indicated that Ferguson Waterworks had submitted the lowest overall qualifying bid for a total estimated project amount of $227,961.31. Additionally, the low price protection clause of the bid allows the lowest bidder to match unit prices in lieu of the bid being split. Ferguson has agreed to honor the low bid price for the water main pipe, bid tabs one through three, future referencing the pipe bid to a total estimated project, or further reducing the bid for the total estimated project amount of $225,906.65. Staff and I recommend that council award the bid for the 2020 water main replacement pipe and parts to the lowest responsible bidder, Ferguson Waterworks of Warren, Michigan, for a unit price specified at a total estimated project cost of $225,906.65. Funds are budgeted and available for this purchase. Staff also requests that council motion include extending this bid to the upcoming proposed standalone non-R3 water main projects at the unit prices identified subject to the fiscal year 2021 budget approval. Thank you. What's uh, the wish of city council? Uh, Your Honor. Mr. Bliss. Uh, I move that we award the bid for the 2020 water main replacement pipe and parts to the lowest responsible bidder, Ferguson Waterworks. Uh, this is a total estimated project amount of $225,906.65. Uh, I would also include in my motion that we can extend this bid to upcoming the upcoming proposed standalone non-R3 water main projects at the unit projects that are identified uh, subject to budget approval. Thank you. Is there support? Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. Support. Thank you, sir. It's been moved and seconded um, to adopt a recommendation of staff, including uh, extending the bid. Uh, is there any discussion from council? All right, clerk, will you please take the vote? Yes. Councilwoman Clark. Yes. Councilman Corbett. Yes. Mayor Pratem Grasty. Yes. Council Rohrbach. Yes. Councilman Soltis. Yes. Councilman Bliss. Yes. Mayor Hartwell. I vote yes. The motion carries. The next item on our agenda is item G1. It's ordinance number 2151, the request for a pilot for the senior development at 27795 De Quinder. This is the second reading. This is Marsh. National Church Residence has requested a pilot of a senior living located at 27795 De Quinder, also known as Madison Manor. This application is due to Mishta no later than April the 1st, requiring a shorter enactment period than the 10 days after approval. Therefore, council is requested to declare an emergency ordinance upon second reading in order to enact this earlier than 10 days after approval. This would require a vote of five to approve. Without implementation sooner than the 10 days, financing will not be available through Mishta this calendar year. National Church Residence is preparing to complete several improvements to the existing facility known as Madison Manor, located at 27795 De Quinder. These improvements are estimated to cost approximately $3 million and include items such as mill and resurface of the asphalt parking lot and drives, installation of four new raised gardens, replacement of the perimeter fence, new landscaping, maintenance to the balconies, in-unit replacement of entry doors, new flooring, updated kitchens, and renovations to meet Type A handicap accessible units. As requested, a full list of improvements and benefits to the residents are included in the agenda packet. The terms included mirror those of the recently approved pilot for Cypress Partners and are conditioned upon city council approval. They include a 4% of the total annual shelter rents attained by Madison Manor during the prior calendar year. This is estimated to be $21,817.
this would be split to all taxing jurisdictions. An annual $40,250 emergency services fee that increases annually by the CPI, this would be retained fully by the city. A lump sum one-time payment of $67,473 for emergency service payment to offset the cost of emergency medical service runs to the senior living facility. This would also be retained in full by the city. In the fiscal year 2020, National Church residents paid $108,472 in total taxes for the property located at 27795 DeQuinder. Of this amount, $40,236 was retained by the city. Under this agreement, because of the emergency services fee, National Church residents would pay approximately $62,067. Of this amount, $48,342 would be retained by the city. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Marsh. Um, what's the wish of City Council on this matter? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Corbett? Uh, one moment, let me just get the correct wording here. Um, I would move that the uh, City Council approve on, um, would it be second reading, Mr. Sharon? Yes, it would. Okay, second reading of the pilot program uh, for Madison Manor and specifically the request for payment in lieu of taxes. Uh, the address is 27795. I sort of mutilated that, but I think I hit all the bases. Would you also include an emergency enactment so it goes into effect by April 1st? Well, if you insist, yes, I would uh, incorporate that by reference, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Is there support? Your Honor. Uh, was that Mr. Soltis? Yeah, support, please. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to uh, approve ordinance number 2151 on second reading. Um, granting the emergency request, um, authorize the payment in lieu of taxes for the senior development at 27795 DeQuinder. Uh, is there a discussion from City Council? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Sherman. I just wanted uh, Council to be aware that the, by virtue of 7.3 of the charter, we're essentially moving up the effective date to prior to April 1st. The effective date is now stated in the motion as a date in March, if council approves, which would make uh, Madison Manor eligible for MISHTA financing this calendar year. And we believe it's in the best interest of the health, safety, and welfare of the public to do these improvements. And that's the reason why it's been proposed to shave a couple of days off the effective date. Thank you, Mr. Sherman. Is there other discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Corbett. I, I was just wondering if there was a member of the uh, public who wanted to speak on it. I don't know Zoom as well as I know go to meeting, uh, but I, I thought I saw some blinking going on under one of the names. I was wondering if that's how an audience member uh, gets attention. I, I'll, I'll throw that to you guys. I just noticed that while you were talking with her. Okay, any other discussion? Your Honor? Yes, please. So I'm, I've been wrestling with this vote. I think because in general, when we did the last pilot program, it was very clear the economic impact. It was clear the jobs, it was clear the need for it and the project's inability to continue. Um, this one is upgrading an existing site. And so, you know, part of me worries that that sets a precedent where we're going to see more and more requests like this coming from owners who just want the money to rehabilitate an existing property. Now, it is definitely a, a, a good use of the pilot. I'm, I'm not saying that it's, it's, it's an inaccurate use of the pilot, uh, you know, that pilot program. But I do worry that it sets a precedent where we're not seeing local jobs, we're not seeing the changes. Um, and, and I don't know that it hits the same standard that I would want us to make for these types of programs going forward in the future. That said, it also has a pretty strong aspect to it with the 
uh, low income housing and increasing that level from where they're currently at. Um, so I, I, I've been torn on this one. I, I think in, in the case of preserving our, our future, I, I, will, I will vote no on this today, um, but I do understand a yes vote. Thank you, Mr. Bliss, for your opinion. Are there, is there any other discussion? All right, the clerk can take the vote. Okay, uh, Councilman Corbett. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grafstein. Yes. Council Rohrbach. Yes. Councilman Soltis. Yes. Councilman Bliss. No. Councilwoman Clark. Yes. And Mayor Herwell. I vote yes. The motion carries six one. <laughs> um, we earlier we moved something on the agenda and it's now called G2. Um, that was an item from the city manager and the city attorney's office and it's called the municipal services agreement with national church residents in coordination with the ordinance we just passed number 2151. Mrs. Marsh do you have a report? Yes in coordination with this approval of ordinance 2151 which was just approved by council to establish and authorize an annual payment in lieu of general property taxes in the amount of 4% of shelter rents. The city has also negotiated with national church residents for a separate municipal services agreement. This agreement is for national church residents to pay no less than $42,250 plus the rate of inflation annually to the city. This annual payment will be in addition to a one-time lump sum of $67,000 $473 that will be paid 30 days after National Church Residents receives certification from MISHTA. This item should be considered by council. Never mind, because you've already approved. Thank you, Mrs. Marsh. Uh, what's the wish of City Council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett, please. Uh, I move that uh, the council concur with the recommendation of staff and enter into an agreement with the National Church Residents in coordination and in the uh, pursuance to ordinance 2151 establishing the 4% uh, general property tax. Thank you. Is there a support? Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Soltis. Support, please. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Sherman. I think the appropriate motion regarding the municipal. Now it came up. The, um, the appropriate motion on the municipal services agreement would be to approve the municipal services agreement and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign on behalf of the city. That's actually what I meant to say, Your Honor. And I'm good with that. Mr. Soltis, do you agree with the. Uh, Wording of that motion? Yeah. Yes, sir, I do. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, it's been moved and seconded to adopt uh, the city attorney's recommendation. Is there any discussion from city council? All right, uh, will the clerk please take the vote? Cheryl, um, if you're still there, will you take I had to unmute myself. Mayor okay. Pro Tem Grastein? Yes. Councilor Rohrbach? Yes. Councilman Soltis? Yes. Councilman Bliss? Yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Corbett? Yes. Mayor Hartwell? I vote yes. The motion carries. Uh, that brings us to the minutes. What's the wish of City Council regarding the regular City Council meeting minutes of March 9, 2020? Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Corbett. I move that the minutes be approved as printed, sir. Thank you, sir. Is there a support? Support. Mrs. Mrs. Clark? Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Item CM20-65, which was the motion to excuse you from the last council meeting uh, due to illness, did not contain the vote. The vote, as I recall, was 6-0, but it, it's missing from the copy of the minutes I have. I will correct that. 
I uh, happily add that to my motion, Your Honor. Okay, thank, thank you. Mr. Mr. Clark, is that, is that okay to add to the motion that you supported? Yes, yes okay. please, thank you. All right, um, any other discussion to adopting the minutes as revised? All right, I'll take a vote on the minutes. Councilor Roback. Yes. Councilman Soltis? Yes. Councilman Bliss? Yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Corbett? Yes. Mayor Pertem Grafstein? Yes. And Mayor Hartwell? I will yes, the motion carries. Oh, there's no other business for City Council, so before we close, um, for just a dose of regularity, I'd invite any closing comments from our council. And I'll recognize in the, the order uh, we typically recognize. Um, so, Mr. Corbett, if you have any closing comments, I'd invite you to make those now. I'll be very quick, Your Honor. I just want to uh, to wish everybody well at this time. Um, if uh, if these times don't scare you, then uh, I don't know what you're uh, reading or hearing. These are frightening times, but we're at solid. And I'm I'm very in, taken and impressed and encouraged by the number of efforts being made around the community. I know Ms. Clark has done a few things and some of the other volunteer groups to reach out to people. I also want to recognize the staff at this time, um, Melissa Marsh and uh, Corey Haynes and right on down the line. They've really had to respond over the last few days. And, uh, they've done a great job. I'm, uh, I, I couldn't be more impressed. Uh, I'm concerned that one crisis after the other, Ms. Marsh is going to simply become too expensive for us at some point with their vast experience going from crisis to crisis. Uh, but uh, she is uh, she's done an incredible job and uh, I'm very impressed by uh, by her and the staff's work um, and I just want to encourage everybody the only thing I really did find discouraging over the last few days were the scenes from down south of the, uh, the young people who assumed the bullet there was a time when I thought I was bulletproof too and I learned the hard way um, this is a very serious uh, matter uh, the uh, pandemic uh, people who uh, seemingly in fairly good health are um, are being struck down by. It. So I want to wish everybody well. I thought the uh, I thought the meeting tonight went for our first time through. Hopefully we don't have to do this too many more times. And uh, good job, uh, Mr. Mayor and uh, Ms. Marsh. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Bliss, any closing comments? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I'd like to to echo some of the same sentiments that Councilman Corbett did. I I think it's it's been amazing to watch the community come together. Um, I also think it's amazing that the community is taking the advice of the officials who know the extent of uh, of this outbreak and are staying home. Um, you know, for the most part, our city is staying home outside of critical activities, things like going to the grocery store or emergency medical visits. Um, and I, I think that that not just needs to be encouraged, but also applauded. Uh, I appreciate everybody who, who is staying home, who's working from home, who can. But I also applaud all of those first responders and uh, grocery workers and delivery drivers who are working in this. Uh, putting themselves at risk, uh, doing their job. Uh, it's interesting because in a in a different time, um, people people might have looked down on people providing the services right now. That we are finally realizing how important and how life saving those actually are, how critical they are to our uh, economy and to our well being. And so I appreciate that. Uh, I also like to. Uh, give a specific shout out to the one at a time community response team. Um, the emergency food pantry that was set up, uh, I'm sure there will be a lot more details coming from Councilwoman Clark, who's been uh, one of the people championing and spearheading the efforts, but it was really impressive. Uh, I think uh, hundreds of people have been helped by, by this group that need it, and it's only going to get, uh, it's only going to get more challenging and more difficult as we go through this, but we will go through it together. Uh, one thing that I would ask is, as we're preparing the budget, uh, my ask of staff is to have an alternative budget with last year's number. Uh, I understand that the, the residents approved 
the millage with the increase, but given the state of, of the economy, given uh, how many of our residents right now are out of work with no end in sight, with uh, you know thousands upon thousands going into unemployment every single day, uh, I would just ask that we have that option. Uh, I don't know where things will be when we approve through the budget process, uh, but it, it's not necessarily a cut or reduction because it's just utilizing the same number that we had prior to the millage increase. Uh, so I would like us to have that option at the table. I, I, I do understand that it would force us to make tough choices, but those are the same tough choices that our residents are making on a daily basis right now as they struggle to survive uh, in households that uh, sometimes had two income, but now are down to zero and just uh, hoping for unemployment and government aid that I hope our resolution will at least help in a small part to be able to bring uh, forward for our residents. So just that request, that's it, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, hi. Um, next, we usually go to Ms. Rohrbach. Ms. Rohrbach, do you have any closing comments, if you could unmute? Yes. Um, I, I'm going to echo what we're, we're all talking about here. Um, I spent uh, time with, uh, with uh, Councilwoman Clark and uh, Amanda Stein and Cheryl Murray and the folks that have been uh, working tirelessly at the uh, Madison Heights Emergency Pantry over the last week. It has been really remarkable and I appreciate all of the, the work that's going in there. Um, I also want to acknowledge the folks um, from the community that are giving back um, uh, Thinking of Michael Brown, who who works for Starbucks, who donated a ton of uh, a ton of, of milk and um, all their perishables when they closed down some of those stores, things like that that are really happening all over the place. We got a bunch of hard boiled eggs and uh, produce today. It was it's just remarkable, and I know those folks um, that are working it are are doing it because they really care about our city, and I appreciate them very much. And I just want to have really acknowledge that. I also want to acknowledge that um, many of us are, um, you know, like the rest of us citizens in our in our city um, are being forced to either work from home or losing work hours. And I know how difficult that is, the change in our status. Um, so I just want everybody to, to recognize that um, everybody in the city is going to be hitting some challenges and the folks who are, who are organizing right now um, and helping at that emergency pantry and so forth are really making a difference for um, people who are, who are facing those challenges right now. Um, but secondly, I want to say that if you are home um, with children trying to homeschool, you know, solidarity, <laughs> it is not easy. <laughs> and I want to um, acknowledge that if you have neighbors, um, elderly neighbors, people who cannot get out, can't get to the grocery store, um, reach out to them, give them a call. Or, you know, I, I walked across the street, knocked on my neighbor, mayor neighbor's uh, uh, door, and then stepped back off of this off of the porch just to say, "Hey, I'm here. If you need anything, please let me know." And I'm also doing um, timeout, um, timeout Madison Heights, which is where uh, every evening at 6.30, I'm stepping out onto my porch just to wave to my neighbors, to say hello, um, not to get close, but just to say hello and to reconnect. And I'm encouraging everybody to do that. So um, let's do what we can to, to stick together, to um, encourage each other to be connected, but from afar. All right, um, stay safe everyone. And uh, I think this went really well for our first time out. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, City Attorney, Mr. Sherman. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I feel like we've all been part of something historic uh, tonight, uh, participating in the first electronic virtual meeting in the history of the Madison Heights City Council, uh, albeit for, um, for a reason that, uh, that is very that has pushed us into a very difficult uh, time that we're all experiencing. I wanna, I wanna applaud 
our first responders, our police officers, our firefighters, um, firefighters with, with EMT backgrounds, the nurses, the doctors, the grocery store employees, the pharmacists who, who, who instead of hunkering down in their homes are required to work so that food and medicine and people will be treated. And, and it, I agree, it's a very frightening time, but uh, it's very important that everyone and all of our citizens comply with the with the governor's executive order to uh, uh, to you know stay in place other than for other than for necessities such as food and medicine and, and treatment etc. Um, so I want to I want to um, wish the council, your families, all of our citizens to be well, stay safe. On a much more positive note, tonight is my today is my father's birthday. He's down in Florida celebrating with celebrating inside with my aunt, his sister. And uh, even though we we would uh, we're having a virtual uh, uh, candle ceremony, blowing out the candles on uh, FaceTime when the meeting's over. So. Um, we're hoping he'll be well and uh, enjoy this birthday and many more. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Larry. Happy birthday to Papa. Uh, City Manager Burst, do you have any closing comments? I'll just echo all the same comments and then also say, you know, when the governor first passed this executive order to allow us to have this virtual meeting, some of the kickback was that uh, people would not be able to participate or it would, you know, harm transparency. But we've had 22 people join us tonight. So I applaud them for taking the time and effort to do that. Um, actually, probably more turnout than had we had it live at City Hall. So thank you very much for joining us. And also wanted to say thank you for all of our staff, um, especially the police and fire departments, the DPS, all the staff at City Hall. We have continued to work throughout this uh, situation and wish all of our residents the best. Thank you, Mrs. Marsh. Uh, our clerk, Mrs. Rotman. No comments, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Grafstein, any closing comments? Unmute. Uh, yes, I would like to echo a lot of uh, a lot of the same sentiments that have already been that have already been said. Um, in, the, in the few days following the first death and the school closures, Amanda Stein, Kim Clark, and a handful of others just jumped in to organize and set up the Madison Heights Emergency Food Pantry. It's an emergency food pantry for, um, for which they're collecting and they're redistributing needed supplies. And Lamphere and Madison districts are also offering free breakfast and lunch pickups, but this one program, the emergency pantry, was something that our residents just came together, mm -hmm. said, I see a need and I need to do something, what can I do? And together they came up with this. So I, you know, uh, Mrs. Clark, I applaud you. Mrs. Stein, I applaud you and everyone who has been helping you. Uh, who has been a part of this, all the residents, no matter what they're doing to help with this, I applaud you all. I want to also thank everyone who's still going into work to keep us going, the medical, the uh, emergency workers, retail truckers, you know, this has all been covered, but also the mail couriers, the garbage crew, you know, Mrs. Marsh and the city staff, I, I want you to know how much we appreciate everything that you are doing so that we can just stay home as much as possible. And it's important our residents know that, that Madison Heights is home and that we are going to get through this. Today, Amanda, um, one of the organizers of the pantry, she said that they served over 200 people. They received donations, including another fridge and a large freezer. And they had the volunteers who were serving everyone. And she made this quote that I want, um, I don't want to share with you. And she said, there is a great deal of fear and uncertainty right now, but one thing is clear our community has each other's backs. And she's right. She's right, we do. Madison Heights is home and we are going to get through this, all right? Mm -hmm. A student once asked anthropologist Margaret Mead, what is the earliest sign of civilization? The student expected her to say a clay pot or a grinding stone, but she thought for a moment and she said a healed femur. A femur is the longest bone in the body. It links the hip, to the knee and in societies without the benefit of our modern medicine it takes about six weeks of rest for a fractured femur to heal so that shows that someone cared for the injured person 
it, they did their hunting and their gathering and they stayed with them and they offered them protection and companionship until that injury could mend. And she explained that where there's the law of the jungle and the survival of the fittest rules, there's no healed farmers. You can't find them. The first sign of civilization is compassion that's seen with a healed firmer, a healed firm fever. It's, it's how well we care for the vulnerable, how well we rally around a person in their time of need, offering them healing and comfort and protection and support until they can rise up and they can walk again. These are the true signs of civilization. And this was a sentiment that was shared by Pastor Fred Rogers, which everyone always calls Mr. Rogers. He said that real strength has to do with helping others. So I applaud all those who are helping others. As we face this worldwide pandemic, we have serious choices to make. And it may be inconvenient, but please take precautions to help everyone. You know people that are immunocompromised and they are scared. Your choices could change their lives. Please be patient with each other and please be part of the solution. Stay safe and be well. All right, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Clark, do you have any closing comments? Yeah, um, so we have uh, some members of some of these volunteer groups who are joining this meeting this evening that I definitely wanted to make sure I recognize. Uh, Michael Abbott, Cheryl Murray, thank you guys so much for, um, for putting your time and energy into this. I know that you guys are equally all dealing with like losses and stresses and you're caring for loved ones at home a lot of the work that's been going on in the community has been going on while people stay in their pajamas and they sit on their sofas and they hit the keyboards and they get online and they try and organize as many people as possible amanda stein um Kathleen Kosky, like everybody who has been getting involved in this is amazing. So I do want to kind of just go over some of the resources that we've been able to create in, in just under two weeks. So the Madison Heights Emergency Pantry was the first thing to get started. Amanda Stein had the idea that we put something together. We didn't know how we were going to do it, but we did it in less than a week. We've served hundreds, literally hundreds of residents in need and our pantry is still fully stocked. It actually is more fully stocked every single day when we leave the building than it was the day we got there. Uh, Cheryl Murray is online right now. She's sitting inside at the pantry. So if you scroll through, you can actually see, thank you, Cheryl, that's amazing. You can see some of these stuff. So we're uh, installing some new shelves over there tomorrow so we can get more room for more stuff over there. We have a couple refrigerators and a freezer for uh, perishable and non-perishable goods. We're accepting just about anything that you can possibly imagine over there. We have dozens of volunteers who are lined up and scheduled to do uh, porch pickups and porch deliveries um, on demand. You can just email the pantry themselves at mhemergencypantry at gmail.com. Um, if you have any needs or if you have any resources, you can email them and they're going to get you on a schedule and put it into place. I also would like uh, to remind people to reach out to volunteers. Uh, this is the most stressful time that I think humans can ever think of in history. And uh, it's really easy to sink into the existential dread of it, of thinking what's going to happen, what are we going to do? But we have all these helpers out there who are providing this light, like temporary support infrastructure for our neighbors so that they can feel calm, that they can feel supported, that they can feel that there's going to be people there to take care of them. Um, more than two thirds of the planet is out of work right now. So it's important that we all remember that if we take care of each other, we're gonna get to the other side of this. Like they, they're not gonna take money and homes and jobs and everything from everybody. It's a temporary solution. The world's gonna slow down for a little bit, uh, be there for each other and we'll all come back stronger on the other side. Um, we also are organizing um, Victory Gardens. Eve Sandoval is a resident. She's also a part of the uh, Seed Library group. Um, she is organizing uh, Victory Gardens throughout the city. We've created a group on Facebook that you can join. She is trying to organize it so that we, are, not only is she providing instructional information from her and other experts, but organizing it so that the city is growing food in succession. So in the event that we need it, we will have um, a constant like growth of food throughout the city. So if you're interested, 
in becoming a part of that group, even if you're not, don't have a green thumb because I do not know how to grow anything. Eve is walking me through everything. Uh, you can join our group. It's called Victory Gardens. It's on Facebook. You can just search it right in the groups. Um, if you want to volunteer for anything, for any kind of aid, you can email us at one at a time mh at gmail.com or go to one at a time mh.com and fill out the forms to be a resource a volunteer uh or if you have any any needs we are just trying to make sure we support as many people as possible we've been able to fulfill a hundred percent of our requests so far it's a pretty exciting thing the neighbors are really geared up and um and organizing with each other. You can also attend interactive events all over the city uh, through different events on Facebook. Um, now is a good time to be a part of Facebook, Dave Soltis, if you're not on there already. I know that you're providing some resources for us as well um, with diapers and wipes, and we're making sure that we get everything to everyone in need. I just wanna really thank all of the volunteers and everyone who have put in all their hard work and energy um, into getting this organized for everyone. Uh, keep it up. If you want to get involved, just let me know. I'm available. Thank you, Mrs. Clark. Um, Mr. Soltis, do you have any closing comments? Uh, just today, also, too, want to echo the sentiments of my colleagues. Um, and just uh, everyone stay home as much as you can and, and be safe. Thank you. Yes, thanks for uh, uh, being flexible, City Council, and uh, anyone who joined us online. Um, uh, these are really challenging times, uh, but we support our governor, we support our county leaders, and we will meet these challenges with determination and humanity and courage and grace. We have to. Now, as a city, our only legal requirement is to protect public safety, and that's the only reason our city exists. Um, but I'm so impressed by the moral uh, um, uprising in our in our community and you see that uh, with the emergency pantry and you see that by our uh, business owners who are making donations and neighborhoods banding together and that's where um, I can use my office city council members can use theirs to encourage the lighter side of this tragedy and really this frightening crisis I don't really want to dwell on what's what what bad is happening, of course we have to be real, but I do appreciate city council's attention and the applause that you're giving um, to really the great things and the generosity of the people of Madison Heights. Um, but back to the core function of our city government and that's public safety. And we are as solid as a rock right now. And that's thanks to the leaders, um, starting with the city manager, Melissa Marsh, our police chief, Corey Haynes, our fire chief, Greg Lolito, DPS director, Corey Almas, and uh, all of our other department heads who are participating in the emergency team. Um, our department heads, our employees, are sacrificing their own health to protect us, and it's truly uh, amazing uh, to behold. And so um, I'll never forget the sacrifice our employees are making to protect me and my neighbors and my family and my little dog at home. Um, so just like many council members mentioned and Mr. Sherman mentioned, there's so many people that still have to work. Um, so just be supportive of them. And even when we pass this health crisis, there will be a second one that hits us. Um, it will be the economic crisis. So even though it may not be our legal requirement, uh, I know this city council and our city will rise to the moral requirement to help those in our community who suffer. Um, so with that, I would adjourn this meeting and maybe we'll, we'll meet together when this is all said and done, but I anticipate we'll meet on this website again in two weeks. Uh, so take care and good night, everyone. The meeting is adjourned.